morning. Hey, good morning, Vincent. Good to see you again. All right. Hey. So hot. Hot and bright. Bright and hot. Yeah, it's summertime. The political scene, I mean. Oh, the political scene as well. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, the government people are out there. They're hammering home their message. Yeah. Everybody should accept the deal. I cannot believe I'm saying <clears throat> this. I cannot believe I'm saying this. What's Carrie that? Lam is hot. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She is, and they're they're dragging in like all kinds yeah. of people that normally wouldn't be on the file. Cole Doctor Cole is yes, hot. Yes, I know. I know. He's yeah. like right in the middle of it. He's hot under oh, the collar. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know he's hot. Emily Lau. Yeah. Not so hot. <laughs> she's always she's always heated. That's for all sure. Right, all right. But yeah, even even people like so the so the government's out there selling their their uh, package for the 2017 chief executive elections. Yep. Even people like Cohen Man, you know, for health, this is not his portfolio. But he's out there, out in the streets, meeting the people, and this is not his thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, usually he's taking care of the healthcare scene. So for him, you know, he gets he kind of gets into a, a, a bit of a conversation out the street level with people, and this is not his forte, mm-hmm. and he gets taken off guard, and he kind of loses his nut. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know what? <clears throat> What's you know that? What? For a guy, yeah, or for an official, yeah, like Ho Wing Man, yeah, actually, this will add points mm-hmm. to him. Well, he's certainly getting experience. Yeah, because he, he he's Mr. Perfect so far. Yeah, yeah. And now he he lose, he 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 lost it. Yeah. Actually makes him more human, a and people bit, can yeah. more affiliate yeah, with yeah. him. So my take is that actually he is going to be closer to the people rather than more distant. Good for yeah. him to get out there and get that experience. Right. I mean, but other people like Bernard Chan, Mr. Yeah. Teflon, and you know he's always doing like, oh, let's talk about heritage and like nicey nice stuff. And you read his weekly column, and it's no sugar, very, no salt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> very anodyne. I call him Mr. Teflon because nothing sticks to him. But even he's been out there selling the government package, which yeah. tells me that. See why? Who you can't really put at street level because he's so toxic; it just gets ugly instantly. Um, he's pulling everybody he can to get out there and spread the okay. message. So, so political theater this week. Yep. Uh, it's a political cappuccino. So uh, the only well, yeah, I'll, I'll, up? a little caffeine into this one. Yeah. Okay, so that's political theater. But here's something that actually I think kind of shocked a lot of people was the city university pulling the plug in their master of fine arts program. And it kind of came out of the blue. It popped up and said Last it. week? Yeah, last week. Uh, done and dusted. And people are crying foul. Here was a program that was expected about 40 people in it. It gets up to full strength after five years of everybody's hard work and investment. It's considered very innovative. A lot of very interesting uh, writers have gone through the program already in its first five years, have gotten published by prestigious publishers. Um, and then all of a sudden... Master in Fine Arts. They pull the plug. They pull the plug. But it's Master of Fine Arts in creative writing. What? Why is that? Uh, well, Master of Fine Arts yeah. or the create. Well, it's specifically in creative writing. Why got cut off? Ah, that's the question. Yeah. Why got cut off? That's what everybody wants to know. Uh, so it's a creative writing program. Uh, you know, the leader of it, Su uh splits her time between Hong Kong and New York. It's called the Low Residency Program, so people can kind of do a lot of it distance. Uh, okay, fine. It's hit, it finally, after five years, it's hitting its target. So why does it all of a sudden, out of the blue, nobody knows it's coming? Why does it get the axe? Pulitzer Prize winners are writing in and saying, "Why are you doing this?" Because they were behind the program uh, during Occupy Central. A lot of the writers, you know, creative, fine arts, you'd expect them to be quite lefty. Uh, they were writing about this and writing about the Umbrella Movement and how much they've supported it and all this type of thing. So a lot of people. Uh, there's a lot of speculation out there that this is yet again evidence of the Beijing influence reaching right into the universities. And saying, oh, here's a whole program we can just... Yeah. So see... But they don't need to do it like this. What they, they need to do yeah. is they just turn the tap off. Well, this, close, they close could. It. They could. But I mean, I mean, these things are not always conducted in the most skillful of manner. Uh, you know, we put in calls to their public relations departments, and it was all like, uh, 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 we're busy, can we get back to you on Monday? No, you can't. The story is, like, in play right now. If you knew that you were going to do this, you would have had your public relations people all ready with their statements and everything, and not have everybody speculating about it all weekend long. But that's where we are. We had to run our story. Nothing from the university, but Susie is out there going, you know, what is going on? She's not putting the finger on directly political motives. But she doesn't have to because everybody else is. So, so that's the question out there right now. There hasn't been a satisfactory answer from the university as to why all of a sudden and why was it so quick and so unexpected. Um, <clears throat> so that, that, was, that was kind of a big story, and I think it is only going to feed the perception that institutions are being invaded. Though, yeah. Because last week, the uh, City University is 
uh, going through the motion of uh, mm. leaving the student alliance as well. As well. That's why that has become the bigger voice. Yeah. Than this one. Yeah. So, but this week, I'm quite sure then this will continue. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it will the, be an ongoing story. Supposedly, the university is going to get back to people today, but we'll have to see. I mean, they, they've now got four or five days of the international community talking about this, and it's building momentum as a story. Oh. It's getting some international traction. So, you mean the international community in Hong Kong or the international community around the world? They've had the world, multiple right. Pulitzer Prize winners were signatories to a letter mm. uh, to the university objecting to this, and these are people that are based in North America, uh, based in the UK. So it's it's picking up. Kind of, it's picking up speed. It might be on a bit of a slow burn, but again, it is increasing this global perception and local perception that Beijing is getting into our universities. You know, every every appointee to a university board is a CCP member. But would that be a water under the bridge by now? I mean, they they decided to close it. Uh, or they just announced it. They just it. announced it a couple of days ago. It just came to Seattle. It will like, close it. Right? Yeah, like right. like completely axing the whole thing. All right. Uh, so that that one's going to be in play, I think. You know, like. And that's how you try to do things. You try to have it before a long weekend so the story dies off. Mm. But they weren't ready, and so I think that this one might get a little slow burn. All right. Okay. So well, one to look out for. All right. Thank you, Andrew. All right. Cheers. Cheers.